Simplicity is the name of the game for in-painting, out-painting, removal and replacement with the IO Paint app. It's had a bunch of updates recently and was previously known as Llama Cleaner. Like they say in the About section, its purpose is to remove or replace any unwanted object, defect or people from your pictures. While you can do this in a number of other applications such as Forge or Comfy UI, IO Paint's strength is in simplicity. You get a friendly interface which automatically changes to show only the applicable controls, automatic model downloading, undo, redo and a whole bunch of other quality of life features. There are no noodles or massive rows of tabs with a billion things going on. Just a clean interface with pretty much everything set up for you ready to go. The one thing you should probably think about, however, is the models you'd like to use, as it supports quite a lot of them. Over to the documentation about models, and you can see there, there are at least seven different erase model options, possibly even more in the future. For Stable Diffusion, 1.5, SD2 and SDXL models are all supported, meaning the more VRAM you have, the better, but if you've got around 8 gig, then you should be able to use most of the things. For GPU acceleration, you'll need an AMD or NVIDIA card on Linux or an NVIDIA card on Microsoft Windows. For Mac, I have no idea about that hardware, but M1 or M2 stuff should be okay. IO Paint does have a CPU option too, but that is probably too slow for most people. Both diffusers and single file checkpoint or safe tensors formats are supported, meaning if you already have a whole bunch of these files, you can use them here too. While Erase and Stable Diffusion are the main model types, advanced users can also make use of ControlNet, LCM LoRas and other models such as AnyText or Kandinsky. One extra little thing that's nice about IO Paint is the documentation. Say you're trying to figure out which of the models you want to use, well no problem as they each have a write-up. Never heard of Zits? No, the model for erasing that. No, never mind, just click on the Zits link. Never heard of Zits? Not a problem. Here they show the result of Zits versus Llama. And while Llama leaves a sort of smear in this example, Zits exhibits better holistic structures. You also get links to both the model and its paper, meaning you can really nerd out if you like. Brilliant stuff. The same goes for plugins which need to be enabled at start time. These include Segment Anything for high quality masks, Photographic Face Restoration with GFP GAN and Restore Former, Real ESR GAN Upscaling, RemBG Background Removal and Anime Segmentation. There is also a section on memory and some frequently asked questions too. I do love a good bit of documentation, don't you? Well, you can try it online or in Colab. I think it's best run locally on your own computer at home, which is what I'm doing here. They sell a one-click installer for Microsoft Windows beginners, or you can just run the single pip install command like you normally would for any typical Python package. Let's go through that now, as it really is stunningly easy. For Python, installing either Anaconda or Miniconda is a far better option than getting confused and downloading some specific Python version for your operating system, as Anaconda manages all that for you. Opening your Anaconda prompt will start you in your base environment, which isn't where we want to install IO Paint. What we want is a nicely named Python 3.10 environment to run the app in. With Anaconda, as each of your nicely named environments are separate, you can use any Python version you like for each one. They can also have different package versions too, without any compatibility issues. Probably a couple of reasons why everyone in the AI world is using Anaconda. Once your new environment has been created, you'll want to activate it, and in order to use the GPU, we need to install a CUDA version of PyTorch. For my system, I selected Stable 2.2.1, Linux, Pip, Python, and CUDA 12.1. You'll need to pick whatever applies to you. So there, Mac, default, whatever, just click on the things and pick whatever applies. If you're not sure what applies to you, just go with the Conda option, as that will handle all the required packages for you. With PyTorch installed in your new Python environment, you're ready to go with the one-line install of the IO Paint package, which is simply pip install IO Paint. That's it, well done, you've completed the installation. With your GPU enabled version of IO Paint now installed, you can run it with the minus minus help option to view all of the things we saw earlier in the documentation, such as enabling those plugins. As you can see, there are loads of options available, but for this video, I won't be delving into any of those advanced options too deeply. Do let me know down in the comments if there's a particular advanced option that needs more explanation. 
Now, just before we fire this thing up, it's probably a good time to have a quick think about models. One quick and easy way to grab a model is to use the minus minus model option. A quick search in Hugging Face shows loads of in-painting models are available. You have a look at the list and say you fancy snagging this one, just click on it and then move up to the top to copy model name to clipboard. You can then paste it after the minus minus model option and then when you run it will go ahead and download the model for you. If you want to know where that goes, models are saved in your home under the .cache directory, just as described in the awesome docs and shown via the help earlier. But what if you already have a bunch of single file models somewhere other than your default cache? Well, the easiest way is to make a new directory, like I have done here, called stable underscore diffusion in that .cache directory, slash home slash nerdy .cache in my case. The simplest way to run it is just IO paint start, but I want to use my GPU, so I'm going to use the option minus minus device CUDA. Once loaded, it will tell you that Uvicorn is running on local host on port 8080, so just go ahead and open that link. That will open you up in removal mode using the default Llama model. You've got this nice dotted canvas with a central button telling you what to do there, and up in the top right is where you'll find the cog to change settings, and at the bottom are a few controls. First up, you're going to need an image, so go ahead and select one. You're going to be drawing a mask, and to make life easier, you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel should you want to. The slider at the bottom will change the brush size. After playing with the zoom, you can click those little arrows and that will reset your view. You've also got undo, redo, show original and save image. There are a couple of things I want to remove from this image. I know she's all futuristic and stuff, but I'm not keen on this green on her skin. All right, so let's paint over that. There we go. That's that green bit gone. And let's paint over that. There we go. That's the other green bit gone as well. If you don't want it to work automatically, then head on over to that cog. And then in the general options, you've got enable manual in painting. If you enable that and click OK, then next time when you do a mask, it won't automatically do it because you've got a new button there, run in painting. Want to use a different removal model? No problem. Head over to that cog again and then under models and in paint, you'll have a list of the models you've got downloaded. So let's select zits and uh, well, I mean, who doesn't love zits and uh, see what this one can do. Can it remove the face from this painting? Well, let's see. I've got my incredibly professionally drawn mask there. So if I run the in painting with the zits model, then there it goes. OK, so that's removal. But what if you want to replace or change something in an image? Well, you're going to need a new model for that. It's a good job you snagged a bunch earlier. OK, select that cog once again and still in the models there we can see we've got stable diffusion, stable diffusion in paint. There's that safe tensors file I had from earlier. And you've also got other diffusion models as well. I'm going to select an in painting model. Let's go with epic realism. Now you can see that picking a stable diffusion model has automatically changed the interface. Now I've got a prompt at the top and a whole bunch of extra controls over on the right. Pretty cool that it gives you only the things that apply to the model you're using, keeping that UI simple and tidy. OK, let's just change this picture up for now and we'll have a different one in there. And I want to make a fairly simple change here, just changing those red lips into blue ones with blue lipstick. And with everything masked, I just press the paint button and oh dear, something went wrong. CUDA out of memory tried to allocate 42 gig. Yes, that's right. It's because this is a rather high resolution image. Does that mean it won't work? Can I not use high resolution images? No, because what you can do is enable the cropper. Then you can just select an area to work with. As you can see, 512 by 512, the default there is quite small. Let's move this cropper over the area that I want to work with. That's a little bit better. Now, when I run paint, I don't get the out of memory error. Excellent. There's all the other standard controls in the minimizable right hand panel too, so you can get rid of it if you don't want it at all. There's mask adjustments in there, steps, guidance scale and denoising strength, a choice of sampler and seed, negative prompt, and a little bit further down at the bottom, you've got control net, LCM Laura, if you want to do everything in fewer steps, color matching, and even free you. All really simple just to turn on or off, and you're good to go with any defaults in most cases. 
One thing to note is your results will highly depend on the quality of your mask. You can do much more complex replacements than just mouths, of course. Let's go back to that painting, and this time I've also got a few of those plugins enabled because I'm lazy and I like point and click. Plugins live in this new box over on the left, and interactive segmentation will help me out here. So I'll just use that to more easily replace this painting. Interactive segmentation, I want that bit. And I want that bit. There we go, accept, and I've got my new mask. A quick prompt for something more appealing, and now when I paint, we get a rather cool looking rodent. There it was before and afterwards. With removal and replacement covered, let's take a look at the next option there, Extender. As you've probably guessed, this is out. Painting by default, both width and height are expanded, but you could go with just one. There you see, XY and XY. 1.25 will give you a little box around it like that, and 1.5, well, you may not be able to see the box depending on the size of your screen, so remember, you can zoom in and out. With the mouse wheel, if you want to change the box size, of course, you can manually drag it by the handles too. Match histograms is not a good option to use with extender, so make sure that is off. You also don't need a prompt, so I'm going to get rid of that one there. But you can use one for the expanded area if you like. Just wait a few seconds for the out painting to finish, and boom, one strangely extended image. To finish up with, if you want a model that can do both removal and replacement, then power paint is well worth a look. Task is the new thing here, and you can do text or shape guides or object removal. If I select the person in the painting again, pop in a prompt and select object removal and then paint, it ignores the prompt and just removes. Shape guided will do its best to try and match the shape of the mask that you've given, so we'll try to make a rodent in that shape. Good luck with that. And there we have its best attempt at trying to match that shape. And of course, the final one there, text guided, just uses the prompt and will fill in as best it sees fit. And there we go. So now we've got a rodent. Let's just turn that cropper off. We can see the original one and the new rodent one, much improved. There's a bunch of other models and plugins too, so plenty to try out. Or if you want something with more bells and whistles, perhaps take a look at Forge Web UI.